Good. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm actually doing fa fairly well. Yeah, appreciate that. Everything's going good here. Hey, it's a Thursday, huh? We got got through another trading day alive. Not too bad. <laughs> lots of stuff going on in the world. Lots to talk about. It is the 9th of June, 2016. And of course, this is your daily Forex trading strategy session. Hosted live at Forex.today. Thank you for uh, being part of the community. You know what I didn't load? I didn't load the disclaimer or nothing. Let me remind you that trading Forex is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, however, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. So always stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. My name is Wayne. I'm the Chief FX Market Strategist for Traders Way. You're a trader. We're a broker. Let's dance, baby. Let's fall in love. You make good trading decisions, and we execute them quickly into the interbanking system. It's your way, a trader's way with Traders Wayne. <clears throat> if you want a variable spread account, we got that for you. If you want a fixed spread account, we got that for you. If you want to be an ECN, we got an ECN account for you. Whatever model fits your business, let's dance, baby. We do these sessions every morning, 7.30 New York time, which is approximately London lunch, depending on the time of year. Monday through Thursday at Forex.today, and every Friday at FX Street for premium members, where I'm also Forex Speaker of the Year, which means I'll be there tomorrow. Going back to the charts. Looks like uh, we tickled about 52 on oil. Now we're down at 51. Is that a top? Could be a rabbit. Could be. So what's going on in the world, huh? New Zealand did not cut interest rates. Very nice. Lots and lots and lots and lots of folks were prepared or even had already made the trade that the New Zealand would indeed cut interest rates. But they haven't, which is very positive. But then again, nobody thought the Bank of Korea was going to cut interest rates, but then the Bank of Korea did cut interest rates. And I'm wondering if they, uh, if, if they were, you know, if they were thinking that uh, China was going to devalue their currency, so they got out in front. Brazil left their interest rates unchanged at 14 and a quarter. <laughs> what? 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 Inflation in May was 9.3% above their 4.5 target. <laughs> oh my goodness. Are you joking me? <clears throat> wow. <clears throat> wow. Their target for the month was 4.5%, and they got 9.3%. Okay, I, I think there's room for improvement there, huh? Holy smokes. Just amazing, huh? <clears throat> Man, I've lost my voice again. Yeah, Damoth, if, if you miss by 100%, <laughs> it's considered a legal, a legal miss, right? Swiss unemployment rate, 3.3. Bloody Swiss. Labor costs. I suppose that's good on the long run if you're trying to create inflation, right? 
Japanese machine orders down 11%. Wow, huh? Down 11%. Let's put that in uh, perspective. Japan expected a decline of 3%. But got 11% decline. Holy smokes. Year over year, that's over 8% decline. <clears throat> the worst in a year and a half. Holy smokes, eh? So like I said, interest rates in Korea now are down to 1.25. The interesting part of that, of course, is uh, that's, still, <laughs> that's still high for, for most countries, right? Chinese CPI, a new low, four-month low, 2%. Chinese PPI. Now this is the producer side. This is you know the, the, the cost of components before you manufacture something. Fifty first month uh, consecutive month of decline. Whoa, fifty one months. That's uh, that's a long time. Did you catch this? The Bank of Japan Deputy Governor uh, 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 Nakaso. Deputy Governor Nakaso. He says the Bank of Japan will add stimulus if needed. Beating deflation through easing is essential for Japan. Interesting, huh? BA, uh, BOJ is watchful of effects from policy, including negative rates. Using measure study risks at each policy meeting. It goes on and on and on and on and on. <clears throat> so pretty interesting stuff. A lot going on there, you know. And if you think of it as maybe all of this is being competitive, right? Now, China loves the fact that the, uh, the Japanese yen is ripper strong. So coming up today, once again, very little to worry about on the, you know, news, on the news front. You know, we have our normal weekly jobless claims. I don't think we need to worry about that. Canadian housing, Canadian uh, industrial capacity and utilization rates. And yeah, you know, nothing really to worry about, right? U.S. wholesale inventories. I uh, wouldn't, you know, none of that. I Trading day. Cool. So <clears throat> I'm starting here with uh, 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 oil on one side here, of course, Mexican uh, peso on the other. Uh, yesterday we talked about how you should just take profit at weekly S2 and play the odds because in the long run it will all average out anyways, right? So it, you know, the, what you need to do is be con um, consistent in your behavior. The interesting thing is it did continue down, and here we are today starting out exactly at the same price where we were yesterday when I said it was all going to average out. Or on, on, the, on the average, it averages out. <clears throat> it usually averages. So here we are. One might say nothing's changed. Get my drawing tool going. I'm pretty accurate on oil. Cool. It's good to be uh, good at something, right? It's... Cool. So that's quite a move. Like if you look at the velocity, I mean, it's straight down, right? Isn't it? Hmm. 
So what do you think? Double top and then a drop? What do you think? Something like that? It can go up to monthly M4. Yeah, it absolutely could. That'd be 53. Sure. So what are you going to do? You're going to buy it off the 55? But the reason I have it making a lower high is a 55 usually does not preclude a higher high. Now, it can, but that's not how I'm playing it. But yeah, if it, you know, like if selling at the monthly R ain't going to do it, then yeah, I'd take another shot up there. If I was a bear on this, yeah, you bet. No problem there, man. Right? So if not here, there. And if not there, there. That kind of thing. But, you know, I, I don't think it'd be a problem to say we're, we're at 51. Right? So let's say it goes up to uh, 52, or almost 52. And then it comes all the way down to 50. And then next week, we had... We head up to 53, 54, maybe 55, and then like down, all the way down again, right? Okay. Fred says USD looks like a bottom too, right? Uh, well, yeah, it did rally today. There was a double bottom on the Dixie, but we're up on the four hour 21. So typically I would look to uh, get short. Doesn't mean I would be, but you know, I'd look to get short on the four hour 21 and we're right in that zone okay especially on a day where we said hey we're going to uh, <clears throat> we're going to play the uh, oh we're going to trade technically so then you just kinda well you have to play it technically there's a 21, I kind of have to respect it. There's your peso, and we got some uh, uh, Mexican peso news today, but I typically don't trade Mexican peso this time of the month. So, I, you know, usually jam a stop and take a walk by now. Okay. And to remind you, um, what I taught you was on the first of the month, which is in this area, you should look for this pair to fall. Is that funny? Every month, Brandon. So, uh, who has not watched the video? Um, how to trade Mexico, uh, uh, MXN, no, I'll do it, Mexican peso, um, probably 4x. So I'm just here on YouTube, and boom. Twelve-minute forex trading strategy: How to scalp the Mexican peso and why it works. And of course, if you watch this, would you leave a comment? Okay, there you go. Holy smokes, look at this one. Tour of my 18 screen forex trading desk. 
34,000 views. Wow. How interesting. Yeah, it must be. Is that one is that the one where I take all my clothes off? No, probably not. All right. Um let's move on dot com. Uh Let's do yet. Well, let's uh, uh, let's put SP five hundred there. All right, fine. I'm going down in a burning ring of fire. I go down, 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 and the flames get higher. And it burns, burns, burns. That ring of fire. All right, so. If you're a bull, this would have to be interesting. Okay. And what's the great concern if you're a bull? Of course it did, Dan, because of the... Uh, Central bank news. All right, so your great concern here, if you were a bull, is that. Okay. Bears are in the market, and if you're a bull, right, those bears are bad news, bad news bears. So the question is, do they re-enter or add to their positions to break the back of the bull. Well, if there are bulls in the market, where do they buy? They will buy here, right? And this is uh, a 618. So that's where the bulls will buy, let's say, this area here. They will, you know they will. You, you, you have to if you're a bull. If you don't do that, you're not bullish. The bears have to sell there because that's where your bears sell. If you don't sell there, you're not a bear. Okay? And this, you know, this is why you get like fib wars and stuff. So, do they re enter today? And if so, who? Do you think it's a coincidence that this weekly M3? is a top for yesterday, and today's top is weekly central? Definitely not a random walk. Right? And the Bears did their job, didn't they? That's exactly how to play this. And the interesting thing is this is what the bulls did, and that was exactly the right thing to do for bulls. So one of our part of our conversation yesterday was if you didn't do either of these things, then you're you're a pig. <laughs> right? I hope you remember these things. That's why I uh, I try to give you colorful analogies because hopefully you remember them, right? If you were a bull and you and you bought down in here, you might say, well, I lost money, or you broke even. Yeah, well, you did the right thing if you were a bull. Okay? Buying a dip on the roll reversal is acceptable. You know, buying up here, not acceptable. Buying here, not acceptable. Okay? And, of course, selling, beautiful. Selling here, acceptable. Selling here, not acceptable. Right? 
selling here acceptable? And so now, if you were a bear, is selling now acceptable? No. Right? Oh, Miles was the pig. Right, so you can't buy down here. So, but if you were a bull, could you be developing a bullish trade plan and looking to buy some sort of technical move up? No, but you definitely, 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 definitely need to be well knee deep into your trade plan. Yes, yes, yes. Doesn't mean it's going up, but if you're a bull and you're on a hardcore double bottom and you're not planning something right now, then I don't know what's going on. What is going on? I don't see why this is a problem. If you're on a smaller time frame and you see something like this, and then you put your stop down here, because this you're predicting a higher high if you trade a double bottom, right? Oh, but the monthly weekly pivot cluster. Well, yeah, because of the monthly pivot cluster. So it's not that it, it's going to go up. The thing is, if you're a bull, your first opportunity is to trade the double bottom. And then if that's right, it'll probably do something like this. Right? And part of it is a bear shouldn't sell there. What a bear is going to do is sell here. Right? So Miles says uh, the drop is too steep. That might be the case, but this is why you drop into small time frames and you don't, you're not risking a lot. Okay? It dropped, right? No lower low, no lower low, no, you know, because I'm, I'm looking at it this way. I mean, that's, oops, that's not a significant change the world lower low, right? Here we go again. So all of a sudden, what if it starts doing this? Right? Or isn't that what you're supposed to be looking for? And this is where suddenly you could have a, a 25, 250 OCO. Oops. Your stop is just below, the, and then your, your, your limit is way up here. And you're just like, yeah, it's a double bottom. And if you're wrong, you lose a little bit. Right? And that comes down to you're already a bull. Okay? So it's not that it will go up. That's not the idea because nobody knows what it will do. But if you are a bull and you're at the monthly reversal pivot zone, shouldn't you be at least prepare, uh, preparing And say, if it does start to reverse on a five-minute chart, shouldn't I, shouldn't I be, you know, shouldn't I take the shot up? Right? Okay. Now that's euro versus yen, so you're, we're all kind of scratching our heads like, oh, is that likely? You know, it's just, a, if it's a terrible place to be a bear. How about that? <laughs> right? So once again, I'm not saying it's going up, but if you were a bull, you need to have a trade plan going on, and you need to be watching this intently, with intensity. And if you're a bear, you, you don't sell there. You don't sell there. You sell high, man. You sell high. You sell high. You sell high, right? You sell, you, you, your trades are supposed to be up here, guys, right? The trade that I probably hate the most 
is probably the one that's taught the most. You have a low, and price starts coming up, and somebody says, well, if it gets lower than the lowest low, then you sell. And it does this, right? I hate that trade. I hate that. I want you to sell here. Right? And we know lots of people end up jamming their stop right here, right? So if you've ever been in a situation where you have 25 pips profit, it comes back, knocks you out of break even, and then drops another 50 to 75. Humble opinion. Right? And if you had just, you know, shorted here in the first place, you would have been fine. Usually where you get knocked out of break even is where you should have actually traded. Not the first time, though, the second time, right? Your first trade should have been here or here. All right, so that's just that's just me ranting. So Euro Yen had a cluster of pivots. Could be an interesting area. Certainly not a not an area to sell. Even though it's fallen all day, very uh, unattractive place to sell, in my humble opinion. You missed it, dude. All right. Where's the support on the beast? By the way, did we actually talk about the beast being in a range? Was it on this chart or somewhere else? Didn't we have it trapped? Is that right? Like we had this huge like 500 pip range? Something like that? I don't know. Yeah, I thought we did. And anyways, uh, and that's when we were way up there. Um, down, 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 down. Up, up. Down, 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 down. And there is our target. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Buck 51 and some change. So lowest low, maybe 51.50, but you know, like Ambassador says, might as well call it 52. By 52, that could be 51.80. That's fine. And correct me if I'm wrong, but like our six month discussions six months ago, we were talking about in this time of year, June, often you get yen strength, and then July and first half of August, it's just sideways. Is that how you remember it? Strong in strong in April. Moderately weak in May, strong again in June, and then nothing really in July, nothing really in August, and then hopefully weak again in September, October, November, right? Is that what you guys remember? Andrew says, yep. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So this is a typical time, in my opinion, where the yen does get strong. And I'm just talking about over the last you know, five or six or seven or eight or ten years or something. And that probably has to do with all the central bank news, right? So it's not just, well, it's seasonal, right? But why is it seasonal? And it's probably this, the central bank news uh, that comes out this time of year. Like, just think of, like, today, right? New Zealand, Bank of Korea, um, Brazil. Um, who else came out today? I mean, um, I mean uh, qu quite a bit, right? So there's a lot going on. And we got the ECB, and we got the, the Fed, and the Bank of England, and, you know, Lots of things come out in June. And then, you know, July and uh, August get, can get quiet, right? So that's why you get the sideways stuff. But that's where you do your job. So it's just interesting. I always find it interesting. It's always interesting that, you know, that uh, the yen is just persistently uh, stronger than we would want, but not a, not unexpected either, right? So here's the beast. And 
the play here is a J-Lo. And over the next 60 days, it could even do this. If you're a bull. Remember, don't expect it to go up until you've given up hope that it'll ever go up. And when finally, let's say it makes a lower low and you're like, that's it. We're down at 148. Ah, oh, it's over. Ciao. Okay, but usually you have to break the camel's back. And and you, if you're not a bull, a bear, or a pig, you might just be a camel. I I don't know. Yeah. But that's usually what happens, right? When you think it'll never happen. Is that right, Bushan? Yeah. So, anyways, currently, you know, we're looking here, right? We have support where we are now. Then the next level is lower. Okay. So all these things. It's funny because I think we were talking short up here. Uh, I can't remember. But anyways, um, now we're down in here. And I, I think what we're going to do is get some sideways action for a while. Work our way up. And if things go well, if, we, if things go good... You know, you, you're able to keep, you know, get in a trade, put a stop, come back, just barely stay in, maybe get a second one, put a stop there, maybe get a third one. These do never get knocked out, but you never really, you're, you're up 100 pips, or, and then you're near break even. Uh, you're up 150 pips, then you're near break even. You know, add, add, add. And then if things go lucky, boom. And of course, if you're in one, 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 and then all of a sudden the BOJ does intervene, okay. boom. So um, this would this would skyrocket, right? What about Brexit? I mean, these are all big, giant question marks. But what about what? What have we learned today? The Bank of Japan is thinking about some sort of intervention, correct? And so, what does this all mean? How about um, China? What's China going to do if Japan intervenes and weakens their currency? That, that negatively impacts China, right? So who else does it hurt if the BOJ does intervene? Where, where are the... Where are the uh, well, yeah, so China would have to weaken the yuan, but then they get capital outflows because people take their money out of China and that doesn't do anybody any good, especially if you're a Chinese bank and you're worried about your own capitalization and people are withdrawing their money, foreigners are withdrawing their money and pulling it out of the Chinese economy and putting it in Singapore. That doesn't help China. And then this that causes problems, right? But also Korea. Right? If, if Japan lowers the value of their currency, it makes Japanese products cheaper for foreigners, and Korea is a huge exporting economy. So what should Korea do if you were managing the currency? Miles, should we really care about Korea? It's a, the the won is a fantastic currency. Yeah, you could. I know we don't talk about it in most, you know, but no, it's a fantastic kind of. So so anyways, if you were Korea and you had to manage the currency and you're like these guys are going to cut or uh, intervene, therefore these guys are going to do something. What are we going to do? 
So anyways, Korea just surprised everybody and they cut interest rates <laughs> today. Unexpected. But if they expect that to happen and then they expect uh, maybe a currency war with these guys, then, then Korea has made the first move. Boom. Isn't that interesting? There's some politics kind of going on there. And what if the Koreans and the, and, and the Japanese central banks are talking to each other? Psst. Hey, Korea. So Miles says, so China has no choice uh, than to weaken the currency, but that they don't want to weaken the currency because they are trying to create a consumer economy. Um, and they are pegged to the U.S. dollar, so on and so forth. So on the other, on the flip side of that, China is probably talking to the United States. Um, but what, when was the last time uh, Chinese and American delegates got together behind closed doors to to work on deals and, and trade? at high levels. Yesterday, and the day before yesterday, Carrie and Lou are in China. <laughs> and one of the things they might be saying is, you know, hey, can you talk to Grandma Yellen and get her to not raise interest rates for us? Because if you raise interest rates in the United States, the dollar gets strong. If the dollar's strong, we're pegged to the dollar. The Chinese renminbi's pay, uh, you know, and then so imagine you're pegged to the U.S. dollar, and you're supposed to make make your currency stronger in value because the U.S. dollar is going up in value. But meanwhile, your economic data is poor, so foreigners are pulling their money out, and of course, even you know, domestic billionaires are sneaking their money out. So. You, you're trying to appreciate your currency this way because you're pegged, but money is flowing out the back door as fast as it can, so it's weakening the currency. And now what do you do? You see what I mean? So it's all related. Okay. What an interesting life we live, huh? So anyways, we got a pivot cluster down here, and, uh, you know, if you're trading this, you probably only got one more move before you have to worry about that, right? So, it's, so maybe down for one more day? Right. Just a review of price action here. Right. Low, high, low. Oh, new lower low. Drag this across. That's your new sell zone. Right. New lower low. Drag this across. It's your new sell zone. New lower low. Drag this across. It's your new sell zone. Lower low. Drag this across. It's your new sell zone. So, looks like someone's taking the 3A2. If 3A2 sticks, that predicts a 1618. That's way down here. But I'd still be worried around 53. <clears throat> also, as a bear, I'd actually rather do that. So it's your call. Remember, all of that set off the 4 hour 55, right? You guys remember that? Yeah, you remember. 
Let's talk about Kiwi Baby. Let's talk about you and me. All right. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things. All right. So one thing that we've discussed recently is like situations like this. How often does price sustain a move outside the pivot profit zone? Right? The red is supposed to be the extreme high for the week, right? And we went through, I don't know, 30 weeks. It's not very often. It's from time to time. So I think maybe 90% of the time, price stays within the, ex the predicted extremes as indicated by weekly pivot points, right? Is that fair? Is that how you remember it? Just remember, it's whatever you remember. Whether it didn't happen or not, it doesn't matter. It's whatever you think you remember. Right? All right. So um, even under this radical news, we stretched out here and hit the pivot profit zone for the month. Okay. So... I would still think that way or just stay away. Right? Because you've hit the conservative target for the month and the aggressive target for the week. Now what? Are you going to reload the boat and go for R2? Well, that better be an explicit trade plan then. Okay? As long as you recognize all the risks, you know. Write it down on paper, like create a social contract, right? Kind of thing. I, Wayne McDonald, understand and accept the risks associated with this trade, right? And your trade plan is this. You need to buy off this 21 with the Stokes kicker. And you need to get through this monthly pivot, the next weekly pivot, the high, which is also a monthly reversal pivot, right? and all the way up with the target of basically just shy of 77. Okay? High risk pips, baby. But if you do it, jam your stop, right? Take a walk. You got the 21, which is ideal. You got the Stokes kicker, which is ideal. You got the fundamental move. So the other thing to kind of mention is in situations where you do sustain a move outside the, the weekly target, it's after fundamentally important news. So Andrew says it sounds like a stressful plan. Well, you know, make the entry good, jam your stop, and, and uh, do it. Right? Maybe this is where you do a... Uh, so what's the risk-reward? So you're, you're in around, what, 75.50? Target... 76.50? It's only 100 pips? <laughs> Alright, well, I guess you do a 5100. You know what I mean? Peter says, uh, Wheeler says he expects the Kiwi to depreciate. Yeah, sure. Right? If you want to be sure of it depreciating, you just cut. But let me throw an idea out there that's radical. Could it be your trade plan for the end of June? So that's three weeks. Could you be short this off of the monthly reversal zone like this? Your target would be uh, 72 to 71. So let's just say 72. Your target's going to be 72, which is here, that kind of area. So your idea, your thought process is if it reverses here, you want something like this, right? Mm 
Now, if it reversed at M4, your actual target is right here, right in the midst of all this. Uh, where did it go? Monthly M2. So your target is actually like 53.50. Okay. So, again, it's not that it will happen. But if you're at extreme levels of resistance, as a technician, you need to recognize it and, and then plan for what might happen tomorrow. Hey, New Zealand didn't cut interest rates as expected. Yeah, okay, great. That was like 15, 16, 17, 18 hours ago. Great. Now what? Right? MoveOn.com, right? So that is important. As Peter says, it could still uh, appreciate, or depreciate, sorry. If it didn't depreciate today, well, then maybe soon. And that's called, you know, having a bias. Hopefully you've backed that up with, you know, a logical, intelligent reason to, to be a bear. But all that being said, there was a pretty nice opportunity up there about eight hours ago, or 12 hours ago. Right? Let's just put your bear hat on for a second. Can you find opportunities in here? To be short? Okay. Notice this in here. I know it's really hard to see. And there's a pivot. Does that look like a roll reversal? Yeah, yeah, I said, well, I, I, Greg, it was expected that they would cut. And Greg said, yeah, no, because, yeah, all right. Hey, just uh, out of curiosity, Greg, are you, are you a Kiwi? You got boots on the ground? Are you from New Zealand? Brendan is. Right on. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's was, it was good intel, Greg. Wait, they, really? <laughs> I'm sorry, Greg. Yeah, Greg, I lived in Northern California for like 20 years, so I'm just, I'm just joshing you. So, a, a pro, uh, you know, a, a potential trade plan here, guys, on this 15-minute chart now. If you wanted to be a bear, you could look for sell, 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 sell. Right, that kind of thing. which according to the Stokes, in about somewhere in the next 90 minutes, you're going to be short on this 15-minute chart. Oh, the Central Bank of the Ukraine just gave us a, a, an inflation report. They say their inflation, their CPI might fall. Yeah, it might fall to only 12%. Holy smokes. Fall to 12%. Hey, I thought they said war was good for an economy, huh? Miles says, why not now? Well, I said sometime in the next... 90 minutes. So if that's in three minutes, that counts. Okay. 
What I threw in there is this, that there's a monthly pivot you can kick off of, right? Well, you're you're playing the 21 hard, which is fine, except the 21 isn't trendy, right? So the angle and separation between the 21 and 55 here is quite high, right? The separation here. So you just draw your MACD, right? MACD is above the waterline and rising. MACD is above the waterline and falling. MACD is at the waterline right now, so it doesn't really tell you anything. There, there's a 2155 kiss, and there's no angle in separation. There's no market. So the only thing that you got here is if the bears get in, you want to be you want to be re short below this area here, right? And there's a pivot there. So if you break above that the bearishness is probably dead until you're way up here. So if it falls, you might say, oh, well, see, Wayne, I told you it was the 21. Uh, you're, okay, you know, yeah, it'll open up if it falls, but it's, I wouldn't say it's going to fall because of the 21. Because I could argue and say, no, it's going to fall because of the 55. <laughs> There's no difference. Right, so in this situation, um, a conservative bear is going to wait for the 5A cross here. Okay. Which would take, you know, let's say at least three candles, right? So 45 minutes. Okay. Oh, well, my appreciation. Yeah, uh, uh, my pleasure. Okay. It is a high risk trade, right? Because this move is a big one, right? So that's why if you're going to sell, you got to sell high. Hang them high for all to see. And your play is this. That's all it is. If you're a bear, you have the double top at monthly resistance. Then you have the lower low, lower high roll reversal off monthly resistance. It's just your job. Okay? If you are a bear. And pretty much fool's gold, right? Oops. Did I just lose it? There we go. Pretty much fool's gold, right? So I, I kind of look at this like it didn't even happen. Is that tradable? Oh, Miles asks about MR1. Does it predict a target? S1. MS1. And it, yeah, it, it is in the book. So. So yeah, that that's not tradable, and therefore it didn't happen. Don't look at things like this and say, "Oh, I could have made so much money." Uh, you're just you're uh, you're you're not helping your psyche at all. That was untradable, therefore it never happened. The only way you, it was tradable is if you were in down here. Okay, I do believe we talked about this. And that if New Zealand, 
although I said it wasn't likely, but if they didn't cut, right, then you're you're in here. And that's the situation. That's why you do swing trades. Because if 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 everything goes well, you're going to get paid. And if you've managed your risk appropriately, especially on Monday, by Tuesday you shouldn't even have risk on the table anymore. And you're like, well, New Zealand's expected to raise interest rates. They probably or, or cut interest rates. They probably will. And then they don't. Oh, you're like, boom, cool, sweet. Well, got to get out now, right? Does it really matter whether you got out here early or stayed in a little bit more? Well, we know most of the time it does reverse, like, like we're looking at here on the week before. Most of the time it does reverse in the reversal. So how many times will it spike higher versus how many times will it just not go any higher? And if you are holding on longer to see if it's going to go up here, you're actually giving up pips, right? So now you're exiting down here versus where you could have just walked out here. So I always say just get out. The weekly R2, weekly uh, S2, always, 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 always get out. So may be, uh, may be um, my only hard and fast rule, really. Yeah, jobless claims, 263, continuing claims, blah, 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 blah. So slightly better than the four-week average, much better than last week. Have you guys ever seen weekly jobless claims report. Oh, by the way, uh, I'm planning a new um, video for the training course. I got this idea that I explain GDP to you by going line by line through the actual GDP spreadsheet, the actual the actual GDP report, not the press release. Wouldn't that be interesting? So you can actually see how it's computed. Yeah, I. I I don't have any intention of like stopping. I think there's what 15 or 20 hours worth of videos and it's not anywhere near complete. I'm going to so uh, I think there I uploaded one a month ago. I have another one to upload that's been done. That that's the that that it was actually taken from a FX Street thing I did where I explain how to use Fed funds rates to anticipate rate hikes. Um, but, you know, literally I thought, let's open up a GDP report, open up the Excel, Excel spreadsheet and go line by line by line and uh, line, right? And discuss, discuss it and go through it. And then what I thought from that, so like when you're looking at consumption and household expenditures as a line item, you say, well, what does that mean, and where do they get that data? So now we have to say, well, that comes from a PCE report. Well, what's the PCE report? And let's go in there. And how do how do you get, for example, how do you get peop, uh, households to consume more? So personal consumption and expenditures is, you know, how much money do you bring home, right? That's wages and after taxes income. And then how much do you spend? How much do you save? 
So now you could take that subcomponent. What's the savings rate in the United States? What's the percentage versus the income? And how is that trending over time? And consumption. How much is a product? How much is its service? How much is it durable goods? And you're like, well, wait. So there's a durable goods orders. Okay? But then you can see all of the consumption is a function of income. Income from wages. Wages from jobs. Jobs, and all of a sudden you're like, well, we can look at all that. You know, right? no, all that breaks down. And all of a sudden I'm like, I was telling my wife, I'm like, this is fascinating. This could be an ex excellent you know, exercise to take people through. But it might be like a 10-hour video. I mean, clearly I'm going to have to do like many videos. <laughs> right? I'm gonna, it's like, this could go on forever. So now I've got to like go through PCE reports. We've got to look at individual you know, growth and in individual income and wages. And, and then we've got to look at job reports and what does that mean and you know, and then of course you have to understand jobs to wages, wages to income, income to expenditures and savings, and expenditures to savings to capacity utilization, and 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 uh, new orders, and then you know, and then how that leads to PPI, and then and then like, well, what's PPI? Well, that's an inflationary indicator. Oh my God! So now we got to talk about the other half of the mandate, right? Because now you're like, well, what is? Why do we even measure all this stuff? Oh, the Central Bank of the United States has a dual mandate. One, to take, con take care of the economy, as measured by GDP, and, and, to, right? and then to um, maintain uh, inflation at reasonable levels. Well, well, that's where this other stuff is. So now let's talk about that, that other part of the dual mandate. Now we've got to go through inflation. I'm like, oh, my God, this is going to be another, this is going to be another 10, 15 hours of videos. <laughs> so anyways... Uh, I'll try to get that done for you guys. Yeah, uh, yeah. Miles says it's quite advanced stuff. So, like, um, so, like, when, so, like, if you go through a GDP report, I don't know if you've ever done it, but you have like chained, you know, chained and unchained data. So we need to, you know, like. Whew, so now you're going to be sitting down talking to your spouse about, you know, unchained uh, savings rates over time. Uh, oh, Brendan. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you can do the course, Brendan. I'm, I'm just going to keep adding and adding and adding it uh, to it. So maybe in two years it will be like 100 hours long. But, like... I want you to, here's my goal, and then I'll move on with this. I want you to be able to download the data and analyze it for yourself. Right? Can you imagine? Like, that's what I want you to be. And then you look through the line item and say, look at that. That's interesting. And then it means something to you as a currency trader. Okay? Does anybody do that now? Does anyone go line by line through the GDP report, through the actual Excel spreadsheet? Right? And what do you prefer? Do you like annualized or seasonally adjusted? Do you use the chain or unchained data? In the, <laughs> all of a sudden you're like, uh, well, that depends, Wayne. Yeah, um, well, you should know these things, right? What would you do if you were you? Is it already, well, already priced in? Um, yes, no, no. Um, so, you know, you're going to, that assumes, so, you know, you, you sound like my professors, right? It's all priced in because, you know, the market's so smart. And any mispricing is going to be arbitraged immediately, right? Uh, that is not my... Um, point of view. So you could say everything's priced in and it's all priced. Um, if you... All right, so to, to, to look at it from a different point of view, that is a Newtonian view of macroeconomics, let's say. 
And I was actually listening to a PhD um, economist from <coughs> Yale. <coughs> <coughs> Anyways, he's running a hedge fund, and his background is really behavioral science. And he said to look at the market like everything is priced in because it's perfectly efficient is to assume that humans think like atoms and that you're using physics right the math you're using is essentially physics because it's like newtonian like this atom you know and this electron and it moves around and you know so and it, and it's perfectly organized mechanical rigid happens like clockwork kind of view, right? And he says, but humans are not atoms. Now you would think, for example, it would all be Newtonian, that it would all be mechanical. So for example, eating fast food is bad for your health. Therefore, because humans are rational, nobody eats at a fast food restaurant. Am I right? Also, drinking alcohol and smoking cigarettes. Very irrational because there's no good that comes from it. It only harms you. Therefore, nobody on earth smokes cigarettes, nor do they drink alcohol, nor do they eat at fast food restaurants. Am I right? Or is it possible much of humanity is completely irrational and maybe even stupid. Right, well, I'm an egotistical, SOB, self-absorbed, arrogant a-hole, right? So, yeah, of course, that's my point of view. Everybody's stupid, right, except us. Um, no, well, the market, even uh, if you look at it as a whole, you're right, so I'm exaggerating for effect. Okay. We're not rational. We would like to think we're rational. Okay? And that I think, even though on paper the market should be efficient, I think much of the time things like greed and fear are in the price. Or also because we're because we're not all smart, the market is very often wrong. For example, the dollar was ripper strong because the Fed just had to raise interest rates. The market was wrong. Dollar had to be mispriced, uh, repriced. So then suddenly it went weak. And then we got to the point where, well, now the, the Fed told us they were going to raise interest rates again. Remember how they're going to raise four times this year? Remember that? Dollar ripper strong again. Three weeks later, the Fed backtracks and say, no, 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 not four times, two times. Dollar weakens again. Why? They're on the wrong side of the trade. So on and so forth, right? So why pay attention to the GDP if everything's priced in? Um, two angles of that. One, it may not be priced in, and two, I just kind of see it as you're just part of the job, right? And that you should just do it because it's something that you're supposed to do. And if you're not willing to do it, it leads you down this path where you're probably not willing to do the other things that are required at some point when you're tested like get out at at the weekly pivot or take the loss when you should, so on and so forth. So I just kind of see it like it's just part of the job. No one's going to laugh at me because I'm breaking down the GDP report provided to me by the government and I'm going line item by line item and understand what it means. Nobody's going to laugh about, uh, about that. So you might as well just do it and say, well, you know, I'm trying to be smart here. That's all.
right? And then, of course, if you're trading other people's money, and they sit down with you like, Wayne, so tell me, how are things going? Well, I'm glad you asked. Just yesterday, I was going through the US GDP report line by line by line by line, and something stood out. So I was looking at the, the seasonally adjusted unchained uh, savings rates in the United States, and I noticed something very interesting that's just not being covered. The guys on CNBC are just missing this point, and I think it's really interesting. So. Let me tell you what I think or what might happen over the next few months, where, to, where this leads, but more importantly, why. So I think there's going to be a change in behavior, and that's what I'm watching for. So because of this, blah, 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 and the guy looks at you or the gal looks at you and says, well, I don't really know what you're talking about, but it sounds like you're really smart. So I have so much money, I don't know what to do with it, so why don't I throw some bones your way? All right, you know. Take the $10 million and just don't screw around with it, right? Don't blow it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So at the very least, okay. So yeah, and so hopefully I'm not an arrogant SOB, but I'm just pointing out humans are far from rational. And that means there's opportunities to make money without increasing your leverage. I mean, how many of you guys have finance backgrounds? I mean, in my opinion, a lot of this is, is laughable. Um, what What is it? The expected... Oh, what, what? Change the color. The, the price of a stock is what? The expected re, uh, return, boy, I haven't done this one, over the risk-free. Who, who remembers it was the capital asset? Martin. I think I still have it over here. The the price of a stock is times the no the yield, oh my god that's so complicated e times r s equals the the risk free rate of return plus the beta times e times the r m minus the risk free rate of return oh my god. I can't even write that down. It's so complicated. So anyways, let me get back to my desk. Oh, is that right, Abigail? Cool. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Hey, Fred. So anyways... I think what they teach is incredibly complicated and extremely un inaccurate, which but I think, you know, having been like a venture capitalist and someone that has reviewed uh, thousands of patents um, and produced some of them and put, put them in the market, um, and I've looked at hundreds of prototypes, um, simple works. Complex things break. And so complex pricing models that work in Newtonian physics point of view of the, of the markets leads to errors and inaccuracies, and that means inefficiencies, and that means the ability to make money when everyone else is wrong. So anyways, um, here's the trend. And claims seems pretty steady, right? And you notice this though? Mm, 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 mm. Okay, you know what that does? That so we had that horrible non-farm payrolls, and yet the unemployment rate drops significantly, right? That's because there's less people looking for jobs. There you go.
So we could have guessed that, right? What was it, 2.3, then it was 2.0. Now we're way down here. So this is what it looks like when it's not adjusted, right? Looks like a lot of retail jobs. See the spike here, summer employment, right? Kids come home from school, take summer jobs, so on and so forth. So you can actually get these numbers and look at them. And remember, why, did, why is this important? Well, jobs lead to wages, wages lead to income, income leads to savings, and what you don't save, you spend. And spending leads to what? New orders, new orders lead to what? Capacity utilization. What does that lead to? Capital expenditures and business investing which then means you're going to need new people to work for you, which means they're going to have good jobs, which means they're going to have wages, and those wages will lead to steady income in which you will save some and spend most, and then that will lead to, and all of a sudden you have an upward spiral reinforcing itself. So just kind of cool to look at this. You can really get involved if you want, but you, know, you take it as far as you want. But I think at least once in a while you should get to know the report, right? So this is the one that just came out today. If you want it, I'll put it here. Um, does anybody need the link to the uh, fundamentals course? Like I said, there's only like, I don't know, 20 hours of videos, but it's maybe only two-thirds done. Okay. Training.fxbootcamp.com. And, uh, oh, looks like I went over time. I apologize for that. So tomorrow I'll be at FX Street. So hopefully I see you there. Boy, we're we're right in there, huh? What did I say? Ninety minutes. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. So I'm gonna eyeball um, this area here and look for opportunities. Is it there yet? No. But you know the classic thing I say in my book a hundred years ago. Um, is that if it comes up here and then you get a five eight cross down. That's your shot. And of course, this is going to roll over and head down. And if you thought it was getting ready to do that, then you can drop into the five minute and look for that, that same exact cycle. Okay. And if you don't like it on yen, check it out on dollar. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Thanks for hanging with me for an hour and a half or so. I do apologize. I went a little bit longer. And uh, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow at FX Street. And if not at FX Street, uh, then I hope you have a fabulous weekend. Uh, I am not accepting new people into FX Boot Camp. Although I do, I'm playing with an idea, but I, I just don't have time, but... I thought it'd be interesting to have a, a scenario or an option for you to like meet with me one on one once a month where we review your trades, just you and me for an hour and a half. And then I kind of give you feedback and then you go work on it for a month. But I don't I don't think I could handle more than, you know, five to ten people. Does that sound like a, an idea that I should ponder 
farther. You think 90 minutes a month? I mean, it would keep you on track, wouldn't it? Yeah, uh, Daniel and I have been doing that actually for a while, and he's he's finding some success. So it's it's encouraging, but for me it's also rewarding. That's why I, I mentor as well because it's um, it's really just good to get in there with you guys. Uh, Fred, uh, FX Bootcamp is uh, is an educational site. You know, FX Bootcamp has been around for 12 years, I think. Okay. What about summer school? You know, I just got so busy, and then I got sick, and, you know, I'm telling you, I got a lot going on, guys. Um, crazy, crazy stuff, um, you know. So, you know, I work like what? I get up sometimes, what, 5 o'clock in the morning, work to yesterday, I work till 11 o'clock at night. It's a long day. So I'm trying to squeeze some of these things in. So then I work on weekends and try to do these things for you on weekends. But I try to get it done. But, um, you know, whatever. Just be patient with me kind of thing. You know, Dan says, would you be willing to direct us to other mentors you think are good? Uh, I used to have a coaching staff back in the day that was fantastic, and I did have a program where you could be mentored by them. Um, and those are guys that I taught how to trade. And, you know, um, I don't, I've don't. i never been taught by anybody else, so I don't know anybody else. But if I did, I would, but, you know, and so that program is, you know, many years long gone. So that's why I wanted to do like this tr training course. You know, I'd like to at least document 20 or 30 hours of my thought on fundamentals and, and just have it available for you uh, if, you know, if, if I'm old and gray, you know. At least you'll have that, right? And then, of course, the next one is do that technically. But So, you know, just always share your thoughts with me of like what kind of things you need. And if it can be done, and if you're patient enough, um, I'll do it for you because I, I want you to succeed. Simple enough, right? So anyways, peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Oh, can I up to yesterday's? Uh, I didn't do it. I didn't do it on YouTube. Oh, God. See, I just... I try to get going, and then the whole world collapses on me. And okay, so yeah, okay, I'll yeah, I'll do today and tomorrow. No, I would never want that, Dan. That sounds horrible. Cheers, guys.